the daily problem is lexicographically smallest equivalent string. And you're given these three strings. Let's just look at S1 and S2 for now. Um, at each index i, uh, S1 and S2 at i are considered equivalent characters. So for example, if we look at this first example, S1 at 0 is p, and S2 at 0 is m. So then it's considered uh, p and m are considered connected. And what we want to do is, uh, for each character in our base string that we're given, um, swap each character any number of times with uh, a connected character until we reach the lexicographically smallest equivalent string. So for example here, uh, we just looked at um, the fact that P and M are connected and M is lexicographically smaller than P. So this base string uh, is parser, it's P and then a bunch of stuff. When we look at the output, it's M and then a bunch of stuff. That's because this P and this M are considered connected. Um, so I find this problem useful if you think of it as a graph problem and uh, the big algorithm to use is uh, union and find, so disjoint sets. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, then this is probably a great thing to follow along with. The idea of disjoint sets is if you have a big graph full of components that may or may not be connected and you want to know how many components are in this graph. So how many, if you start at one node and you can go to any other node uh, that's connected to it, um, how many separate like islands of nodes are made in that graph? Um, or is it is it just one component? connected component is the whole graph. Uh, you can reach any node from any other node, or is it you can only reach some, and how, how many different islands are there, and which node belongs to which island. That's sort of what disjoint sets handle. Um, so I think let's just jump into coding it, and hopefully it'll make sense along the way. First thing to do is we'll just say n equals length of s1, and then for dis disjoint sets, uh, we're going to modify this one a little bit, but um, the two data structures you want are a root array and a size array. So a root array, you usually say for i for i in range n. Uh, but here, actually, if we think about it, we're sort of comparing, hey, a is a node, and now it's connected to b, and b is a node, and now it's connected to c. So now a and c and b are all connected. Uh, so really, we're looking at each letter in the alphabet as being potentially connected. So we say root is equal to i for i in range 26. So it's going to go 0 through 25, 0 representing a, 25 representing z. And what this means is uh, for each index i, uh, the value at that index is the, is the root character, the root node for each connected component. So we initialize root and we start and there's no connections that have been drawn. We haven't connected P and M, for example. Uh, and now we'll say, hey, A leads to A because because zero uh, at I equals zero, the value is zero. At I equals one, the value is one. So B is connected with itself and nothing else. And then if we connected B and A, let's say, then we could say, well, root at 1 equals 0. Now b is connected to a, and a has been chosen as the flagship uh, character. That's the root node for that component. So then we would have uh, root at b is a, or in this case, root at 1 is 0 is our way of saying that, but I'll try and just stick to the characters because I think it's, more, it's less um, confounding. Uh, and then the other thing that we want to keep track of is an array containing the sizes of each component. Uh, and this is useful for optimization purposes, but we'll say something like 1 times 26. So now the size array represents the size of each component. So we begin and we have 26 components where each node is its own flagship, uh, flagship node, sort of marker node or root node for that component and also each component is of size one. It just contains that single node. And what we want to do is we want to iterate through, and then there's two functions we want to use. There's find, which is uh, given node A, uh, find the root node at that component. So in the beginning, it's going to always return itself. But uh, later on, let's say you connected B to A, and then you called find B, 
you want that to return A. And then let's say you connected C to B and you call find C, you want that to return A as well. Um, that's the first function we're going to call. And the second function is going to be actually connecting things. So we'll, we'll say A and B. And this is pretty typical notation. It's a little confusing that we're saying find node A and find nodes A and B when we're working with alphabet characters. So uh, keep that in mind. If I'm saying A and B, I might be talking about either one of those, the, the actual characters in these strings or also the, uh, the notation that's typically used for union find. And what this is going to do is uh, we're actually, we don't actually really care about node A or node B, uh, th these input nodes that we're given. What we care about are the root nodes of these. Uh, we don't actually care about these at all. So the first thing we do is we usually say A equals find A, B equals find B. And then we go from there and we're not even dealing with these nodes anymore, interestingly enough, uh, unless they are their own component, like in the beginning, then find A will return A. Or if they're their own flagship to a large, let's say there's a component with like seven characters that are all considered connected, uh, but you happen to be at the uh, uh, connecting two flagship characters. So starting with find A, how do we get the, uh, the root character? Well, the first thing we could do is say while a is not equal to root at A. A equals root at A, and then return A. And what this will do is it'll say, let's say C is connected to B, B is connected to A, A is our flagship character, and then we're connecting that to D. And we don't really care about D, but we're calling find C right here, the characters. So then we say, well, root at C is B, so go to B, uh, but then root at B is A, so go to A, but then root at A is itself because that's the flagship character. And we can say for each marker character or root character or flagship character, root at that will always point to itself. Um, so then we return the character A uh, because that's the, that's the node we want. Um, but the problem with this is we, we can actually, or it's not a problem with this, but we can improve upon this. Uh, because this, if you had and okay, fine, then D is connected to C, and then E is connected to D. E is gonna have to iterate through like five times to get to the A character. So if we actually just changed root and instead of having C point to B and B point to A, if we just had C point directly to A, that would optimize significantly. And that actually lowers the big O notation. So instead of that, we can say, or I'll leave this up, uh, but what we're gonna wanna do eventually, uh, instead of that, is to say while root at a is not equal to root at root at a, root at a equals root at root at a. And then we want to turn root at a. So what we're saying is root at c, if c is connected to b and b is connected to a, so c points to b, b points to a in this root array, uh, root at C is, is the character B, is the B node. And then root at the B node is the A node. So then we say, well, then the root at the C node is now the A node. And then we say, well, the A node is equal to the A node. So then we're done. But what we've done is we've actually changed the root array itself. When we say root at A equals root at root at A, we're actually changing this root array around as opposed to here where we're not actually changing anything in the root array, we're just iterating through with a pointer. So this is called um, path compression. So we've compressed the path, it makes this, uh, you're, you can technically, if you had a bajillion different nodes instead of 26, you could, it would technically be very, very, very slightly above O of one uh, to call this find function. Uh, o of one, it would be infinitesimally small. It's something like if you had uh, uh, like 10 quadrillion, you'd have to on average, like no different nodes, you'd have to on average go through like five uh, or two or something connections. I forget the exact, I'll put it in the description, but the exact function is um, much, 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 much less than O of log N 
time complexity, but it is technically not quite O of 1. But anyway, so file compression basically makes that O of 1, though, um, calling this. Because each time we call it, there's a very good chance that, let's say, character C is going to lead directly to its root node from here on out, or uh, whatever, instead of being um, O of log n, because it would be the height of the tree of any given component. Uh, so anyway, now that we have these two root nodes, what we want to say, and again, I'm outlining a typical uh, disjoint set algorithm, and I'm going to modify it. But what we want to say is which one of those are larger. So let's say node A here, uh, whatever root node we've come upon, that's the root node of a component that has seven nodes. And this is the root node of a component that has two nodes. Well, for the sake of this in the future, so that there's less overhead, we want to add the two nodes component to the seven nodes component. So the seven nodes component is going to this is going to stay the root node, and this root node is now going to point to A, and it's going to combine itself with A. And now everything that points to this root node is going to point to this root node, uh, the B root node, and then that's going to point to the A root node. So we've added a depth of one there for only those two nodes, rather than adding a depth of one for the five nodes that are part of root A if we pointed A to B. So we want to say something like, right off the bat, it's nice to say, if A is B return, you see that sometimes, then we want to say, if size at B is greater than size at A, then we want to combine A with B, or else combine B with A. So here we'll say something like, uh, root at A equals B, and then size at B plus equals size at A. Because we've combined B, now it's A, it's the size of A larger. So let's say A is a single node, we've added a single node into this. Let's say A is a, uh, the root node for a component that has 10 nodes, now B is 10 nodes larger. And then also now everything that points to A, now when find is called, A is not going to be returned anymore, node B is going to be returned. Uh, or else we do the opposite. So B would point to A, uh, or size of A plus equal size of B. Typically it's done in this order just because uh, uh, if they're equal, if the size is equal, then B combines with A, which kind of makes sense because A comes first, I guess. Uh, so with that in mind, then what we would want to do is say, um, for each of these, call a union. So call a union between P and M. Call a union between A and O. Call a union between R and R, which we'll probably return here, and K and R, and so on. Um, but before we do that, we got to think about what we want out of this. What we want out of this is, let's say we're calling the union between K and R. Uh, K is less than R, so anytime we're looking at R, P-A-R-S-E-R, -E we're going to want that to be a K. Uh, yeah, and also, I guess S is connected in this. So, event so eventually we know, and E is connected to I, so eventually we know we're going to have a, comp an, a connected component with S, R, and K. And we'll notice in the output parser, R at, these two R's and this S will always turn to this K. There's never going to be a situation where we go, you know what, actually I want an S. That's never going to happen. The moment S and K are connected, if we ever see an S in the base string or a K, we're only going to return a K. Uh, and we can look here and say, how do, how do we select out of each disjoint set, out of each of these components that we're finding using the root and size array, how do we select the smallest letter? Um, and it's pretty simple. We just say, well, instead of comparing these sizes, sure, this makes it slightly more efficient, but uh, what if we just had the flagship character be the smallest character instead of the character with the largest size? So for example, A gets connected to something, A will always be prioritized. And then we can just call find of any character, find of S, find of R, and say, well, it's K, so we just have uh, each root node be the 
lexicographically smallest character in that set. Um, and that's the, that's the kind of one thing that deviates this from a normal um, disjoint set, which right now this is a very typical disjoint set, but we can change it and we can say, let's get rid of size. And then here, instead of comparing the size, we just say uh, if B is less than A or else, and then we get rid of the size. So now if we run the un if we run all these unions, we can say for I in range N, to define N, uh, union, and then we have to translate these characters where A is zero and B is one and so on. So we would want to say something like union ord of S1 at I uh, minus 97. So if it's A, ord of A is 97, so that go to zero. Ord of Z would be uh, 122, 123, um, I don't know. And uh, the same thing, ord of S2 at I minus 97. So now we're calling that, and then let's print root to see what we're looking at, and then we'll just return base string. So everything's wrong because we're just returning early. But we look at root. We have all, all 26 of our characters. And we can see that 0 points to itself, 1 points to itself, and so on. Um, but we can see slightly different things. For example, this points to 10, and this also points to 10. This is 19, so 18 points to 10 and 17 points to 10. Given that S and R are next to each other on the, on the alphabet, I'm guessing that that's letters 17 and 18. So they both point to 10, which I'm guessing is K. And then we can see that 10 points to itself. We can see character, whatever this is, uh, 11, 12, 14, points to character zero. So at some point, A was paired with uh, probably O, it looks like, is, is character 14. So we can see this in action, and this is really powerful because it means anytime we encounter an S or an R, anytime we encounter these two, we have they're pointing to 10, so we just return 10. Um, and we can actually do this in one line at the very end. Uh, what we're eventually going to want is something like uh, for each character in base string, it's essentially find of that number corresponding to that character. So we'll say uh, return find of ord of base string at i minus 97 for i in range. I don't even think we need that. I think we can just say for i in base string. And then here just say ord of i, or we'll say c, because these are the characters in base string. And then the last thing we need to do is this is going to return a number, so we have to turn this back into a character. So we say chur of find of ord of c minus 97 plus 97 for c in base string. And then this should return a list, so what we want to do is say empty string dot join this. And if we look now, it's successfully calculated this. It's gone through and said P, I don't know what P is. I'm guessing P is uh, uh, probably this or something, I don't know, uh, points to M. And then A points to itself because zero points to zero. And then R points to 10. And then the character of 10 plus 97, the character of 107 is, is K. And then S points to 10 too, so that's K. And then E points to itself, and R points to K again. This is pretty much the solution using disjoint sets. Very fast. I can't really think of anything faster. This person looks like they do use rank. That's kind of another way to do it. There's rank and size, although I'm... Uh, I have a hard time in math. This is really useful if there are many nodes. This sort of um, uh, optimizing by 
combining smaller sets into larger sets. We've sacrificed that. But what we've gained is a very quick way. We, we don't have to figure out in any given set what the smallest character is. We just, that's the root. Um, so it's pretty comparable. Potentially, if you retain some sort of rank or size func uh, size array, that might help. But that's the solution. Uh, hit like and follow if you like these. Um, if you don't know disjoint sets, hopefully now you're a little closer.